say family i just wanted to explain to y'all once again man somebody tried to get us put out of there man got banned off of here once again man on the cool and i'm not understanding what's going on but of course we got that straightened out i peeled everything i won once again this is like the third time this year and we are only in the month of march so it seemed like every month they're gonna hit me with one of these but it's cool man it's cool we're gonna keep on pushing y'all know we're gonna stay driven just wanted y'all to know man uh that been an issue it ain't been because i've been trying to be absent or whatever man it's just been hey somebody been trying to get us put up out of here we're gonna keep pushing that issue because we know somebody want us gone hey you can't stop what we growing and that's just what it is i'm just saying So Sight family, do me a favor. Wipe your feet as you come in the door. And for the ones that don't know, there's like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell icon and turn post notifications on all. And also, follow me on Instagram at allfactskingko. All lowercase, that is a place where I will always respond. I'm finna do the shout outs again, man. For everybody who go follow on Instagram, I will shout you out on here. But for today's topic, man, we gotta get to a topic that I've been trying to do for a while, man couple days but of course you know i've been banned so i couldn't and it's the situation that happened with quando rondo now we also got to talk about what happened with fats aka both the feezy or both the fats nip brother if y'all don't know who he is go back to the early nipsey days you'll see him around real short in stature but why with that business you can see it all over his face all action everybody who know the man said the same thing about him he was fearless you feel me Nip even immortalized him within one of his songs, his last song, Racks in the Middle with Roddy Rich, when he said, damn, I wish my nigga Fats was here. How you died 30 something after banging all them years. Grammy nominated and a sign of shedding tears. Money, power, fame, but I can't make you reappear, but I don't wipe them though. We just embrace the only life we know. If it was me, nigga, I would tell you live your life and grow. I tell you, finish what we started, reach them heights, you know, and gas the V12 until the pipe is smoke. Y'all know the most pulverizing part of the entire song. He also added the man's gravestone right next to that part while he was spitting them bars, man. Hey, something that was all embedded in our mind when we heard that song, but that's facts. And we're going to get into that later because Nipsey Potner is the one who brought all this up. Lil Rise A, someone that we have been speaking about very often here on the channel lately you know what i'm saying he brought up this quando rondo situation even brought up nip but it was all centered around big u and we're gonna dive into it all but first we're gonna do some review that way we can reanalyze everything that was going on around this situation and it can make sense for y'all completely i can tie it all in together for y'all you feel me remember big u was the main driving factor for everything you feel me allegedly but overall Brick Baby was an important key component to this situation. He was the right hand man, allegedly. Now he was tied into the fat situation due to some comments he made. Also tied into Nipsey situation due to some comments he made. And if y'all remember the little pop situation, he was the main talking head as far as disrespecting that situation and disrespecting Quando Rondo. So in a video I dropped a year ago, if y'all remember that man Brick Baby took the No Jumper podcast and touched on that situation and put out this message to that man Quando Rondo right after Pop died. Hey, you claiming it? You ain't the right for this? Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like. Like, Quando Rondo. You know what I'm saying? Boy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Boy, Explain. stop it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't come to the 60s and want to provide now that, 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 bro, that boy, your You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you ain't doing that. Yeah. At all, we not doing none of that. Well, it's gonna be weird for you because you go dark so much. It ain't weird for me. Yeah. It ain't weird for me at all. Mm. I have to say, you know what I'm saying? You're not from Rolling 60s. Right. You're not from LA Rolling 60s. You're not from Rolling 60s. Right. I'm the hood. We didn't make that call. But you didn't, you didn't, you didn't put that on the board like you finna make this play. I'm the hood. Did you? And if y'all remember back then, YB stepped up with Quando and said, wait till I start talking. But I wanted to refresh that to y'all memory to let y'all know about how Brick Baby felt about this situation before we get into what Lil Rise A had to say. I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all that. Now, Quando, he did stand his ground. He came back out, spoke up, and let it be known how he felt. But here is the insight 
to the entire situation that was going on and being discussed internally from within the Roller 60s. But they pretty much knew about that situation. Next, I want to get to the Quando Rondo situation. Quando Rondo used to come in town and bypass Big Gil. Left a salty taste in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. In fact, everybody that bypassed him, Big you hated. Meat Mills, the balls, Big Ross, <laughs> a couple of others that I would not name right now, but y'all get the drift. He hated everybody that bypassed him and went straight to Big U. Um, correction, and went straight to Nipsey. So when Quando Rondo got into his little jam, he couldn't wait to rub his nose into the mud. Y'all don't get it though. Come on, follow me, y'all. Follow me. Look, family, for the ones who didn't really understand what Raz A was trying to say, here's what I heard. Clarification. It's what I heard. But y'all heard him speak on Meek Mill and Ricky Rose, Rick Ross. And we all know that Rick Ross and them been booked at some point. There is uh, an alleged rumor. Let me say alleged. There is an alleged rumor out there that both of them got jacked for some chains or whatever. Now, the location, I can't remember exactly where it's at. I don't know if it was in L.A., but that's besides the fact. We know some stuff happened with Kondo multiple times where Kondo getting changed, pulled on out there in L.A. And a lot of us at the time thought it was due to what happened with uh, the Hoovers when he disrespected Hoover out in Atlanta on that video. And then the Hoovers from Cali decided to pop up and speak on that, address that issue because they ain't no busters on the coup, regardless of whatever, you know, hey, they ain't no busters. They got, they got stand-up guys over there, too. So they're going to speak on that. That's their hood. You ain't going to disrespect that. Now, when that happened, what did Quando do? He went to go sit down with Big U. So y'all know the relationship was deep. He told y'all, look at him like, uh. But if y'all remember around that time, he was linking up with Nip, trying to do music with Nip, trying to tap in with other LA 60s, trying to put his feet into the soil and really, you know, create connections with the music scene and the street scene where his gang originally started from. And if that's what he want to do, that's what he want to do. But like I done told y'all before, hey, why do that? You from a whole nother chapter, from a whole nother state. You didn't grow up with them boys out there, man. They ain't gonna respect you the same because they don't look at you the same. They ain't grow up with you. They don't know what you about. And now you a rapper. So now they looking at you like a rap capper. And that's just what it is. But that's the, besides the fact. What I'm catching from this is that he said, Hey, man, he tried to put that man face in the mud. Let me clarify. He said he couldn't wait to rub that man face in the mud. And that could be interpreted two different ways. The way I took it was, hey, look, <laughs> Big U set up this situation where he convinced Quando Rondo, basically, I'm your safety out here in L.A. Yeah, you from 60s. That's our connection. That's why you the little homie. You my nephew. I'm your unk. You can call me unk. It's love there. You can call me anytime. Got my personal number. I'm going to keep you safe. Since Quando came to LA and bypassed Big U, creating new connections and maneuvering around Big U, not bringing that bread to Big U, Big U set up an issue, allegedly, let me say that for the extra out people, that got Quando, Rondo, and Lil Pop smashed. He got them slammed on. So now they looking at the situation like maybe Unk was right. We wasn't safe out there. We should have tapped in with Unk so he could have made sure everything was cool. So he hopped online and decided to mock the situation. And that's what I was explaining to y'all in that video I dropped last year where y'all was saying, man, hey, big, you ain't saying nothing here. You reaching, you cat. Dude was speaking subliminally. And if you couldn't read between the lines, bro, that shows me how much y'all dudes who commented that can't read a room. So how you going to survive anywhere if you can't read energy and see what's going on around you, where your discernment at? Where your street cred, what y'all call it, street cred, street intelligence at. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro, he was talking in a sinister voice, trying to get a point across. I'm going to reshow that to y'all so y'all can really catch it this time. Imagine all the dudes and when suddenly the storm came, they folded their tent. They went inside, but they shut down. No, they ain't with no real dude. When it get hard for me, I get quiet and I get still. I need to hear all the doors is opening. I need to know where I'm going, which way I'm going. And I fight harder. That's why I keep winning. Because I welcome the challenge. I welcome the challenge. And see, this part is exactly what I'm talking about, family. He took a jab at him right here, for real, for real. Nah, not no crime for me. 
Nah, not no crime for me. This man, a passenger in that car, frantic. I said I welcome the challenge. When it get hard, I welcome it. I look for it. Y'all gotta remember, that was the day after all this stuff was going on. So that's why he would come out speaking like that. But of course, if y'all remember that video, that was not it. There was a whole nother live stream where he was doing a celebration. About what? Let's see what he had to say. It's really just a celebration. I don't drink and I don't smoke cigars. But um, I got this as a gift from uh, a production company for the success we had with um, for the success we had with Hip Hop Uncovered. You big lying motherfucker, boy. Hey, y'all see what he did right there? That little pause. Uh, the success we had with uh, uh, Hip Hop Uncovered. That was a lie. That's what people do when they lie. Had to stop, think. Uh, uh, hip hop uncovered. So, you start. I kick it with y'all and chop it up. I don't smoke, but I do get to celebrate. Good things do happen to good people. You know, I like to just say thank you. To my friends, I ain't gonna post this. I'm gonna put it on a story so it can roll on. Thank you for what, man? Thank you for what? What are you thanking them for? If it's your success with hip hop uncovered, why you thinking people? I mean, I don't understand. Do capping, but y'all need to really listen, man, because that's not what it's about. But I'm gonna say this though: never stop hustling. Never stop working. Never stop. <laughs> never stop. Quick interpretation. What he mean by never stop hustling and that devious ass laugh that he just did. Hey, when it's a real one out of your own section and he's gaining the control over the youth. They love him. The city love him. They want to move him into a position that you at. Get him picked off. Do him grimy. Go behind his back. Smother his motion. And also those rappers that you feel like is weak. Go ahead and take whatever you want from them. Bully them. And then the ones who really standing on something, get them out their element. Make them come to a foreign land, to your area. And have your young homies who look up to you for guidance and leadership who believe you're going to lead them the right way. Nah, lead them into a brick wall by making them go smush something for you and trick off their life. Because you ain't going to do it for yourself. You ain't going to put yourself in that risk. You're going to get the paper off of that. You're going to keep all your businesses going. Knock out any threat. That's what he means by that. I heard somebody said... The problem with Big U is he don't complete nothing. <laughs> I've been completing these projects for years. I've been completing these projects for years. Tell me y'all ain't getting no devious ass vibes from that, no snake vibes. I've been completing these projects for years. In other words, he's saying, I've been controlling and extorting these projects for years. It's all smoke. It's all smoke. But we working though. He been telling y'all it's all smoke. With every one of these issues he been handling for years. Notice in the background, he been showing off that 33rd and the 3rd degree. Y'all know what? And if you know, you know. If you don't, you're slow. I'm just saying, man. Hey, he's showing y'all who his allegiance is toward and what he with. No wonder why he doing the developing options and got this stuff going on with the state and the police and whatnot. He's pledged his allegiance towards a certain society. Can't get into that in this one, man, because YouTube already been grilling me. But I'm just saying, y'all got to open your eyes and pay attention. But this here, <laughs> I'm just going to throw this up on the story. It's just a little celebration and only we know what it's about. It's just a little celebration and only we know what it's about. I thought he just said it was for hip hop uncensored. 
So now only we know what it's about. Y'all see how he back to speaking cryptically? This is all cryptic. And I told y'all he was lying when he said it was about hip hop uncensored. But Prince Hall is thriving well. We are doing well. We're creating. We're giving black men a chance. And we ain't gonna apologize for that. We ain't gonna apologize for that. We're gonna keep doing it. We ain't gonna apologize for that. We gonna keep doing it. We gonna go through this, man. How many things his name is attached to that are grimy? We ain't gonna apologize for that. We gonna keep doing it. We ain't gonna apologize for that. It's just a congratulations cigar. I don't smoke cigars. But like I said, FX sent me this as a gift from a project we completed with the Hip Hop Uncover. Y'all see, now it's back to being about Hip Hop Uncovered. That's what the celebration is about, the success and whatnot. The lie. Hey, but y'all see the little devious ass smile at the end? We're just gonna have a cigarette to some success we had. Sometimes you gotta sit back and enjoy it and think about the things you have done. Sometimes you gotta sit back and enjoy it and think about the things you have done. I ain't gonna be long winded. Sometimes you gotta sit back and enjoy it and think about the things you have done. Who the hell words shit like that when it's about success? I mean, I don't get that. When you say sometimes you gotta sit back and think about the things you have accomplished. And I know this man can't read, but he know how to speak. I done heard him speak plenty of times, so don't utilize that excuse. The man is just on some cryptic shit. And like I said, congratulations to the successful things I have done with these young men and young women alike too. Come on, man. Who words shit like that? Who words shit like that? It's just celebration. Y'all will probably ask what, but I ain't gonna say it. Y'all will probably ask what, but I ain't gonna say it. See, here we go with this. This celebration is about some shit that only I know or we know, and I ain't gonna say what. I thought it was about the success of Hip Hop Uncovered. It's not about that. Keep on trying to let y'all know that. You can always tell when a nigga trying to be scary. He trying to make y'all fear him. And then, you, know, you know, my big brother Suge always smoked these nights, man. Shouts out to Suge, dude. I don't know how Suge do. Shouts out to Suge. I'm gonna lay it down. Gotta give that shout out to Suge, right? Because we all know Suge was the original backdoor king slash snake slash bully on the coup. But I want y'all to pay attention to his face in his last one and really listen to what he's saying. I'm gonna lay it down, man. I'm gonna post this and lay it down. Celebrate success. Here we go. Here's a toast. Hey, here's an old one before I go. Here's a toast to the boogie. Here's a toast to the boogie. I'll smoke to that. Light is up. <laughs> Light is up. <laughs> yes, sir. And like I said, I ain't gonna never stop giving developing options props. On that. I'm writing another story. I got a banger coming. Putting his pen to work. God bless. And there was a lot of little cryptic shit within that. And in the first one I dropped, I didn't really want to dissect it and deep dive because I already knew it was going to cause a lot of controversy how it was. And I didn't want to pour fuel onto the fire. But now, one of his own homies from his same hood coming out and speaking on this. I'm going to go ahead and open it up for y'all. See, when the man first said the first one where he rapped the song, a toast to the boogie he calling himself the boogie man why he mentioned should he the bully he the back door you feel me 
You got to come holler at him anytime you in his land. Then when he said, I lighters up, lighters up, I toast to that. Basically talking about that flame, that sword. Y'all know that stick. Then again, at the end, he re mentioned it one more time by stating, I'm going to rewrite this story. Basically letting it be known. You ain't finna have no affiliations out here in my land unless you come through me. And then I ain't never going to stop supporting developing options. We know those are the people that, you know, really run up under him who do what he say on the coup. Then him saying, I got a banger coming. I'm finna start using this pen or writing this pen. Basically talking about his hammer, talking about that stick. And you know that by the way he said it in his face at the end. Look at it. I got a banger coming, putting this pen to work. God bless. But like we stated in the beginning, that was all messages directed at Quando Rondo, letting him know it ain't safe out here unless you come holler at me first. Don't come to my terrain unless you tap in with me first. And we all know he utilized that situation as a way to promote his own stuff he had going on, checking in. So it was a way to really extort everybody in the industry who come out there to Cali by saying, y'all going to tap in with me first and give me a piece of any pot, any bag y'all make out here. And we know that by what he stated in his own show. Listen. 2 Chain said something about him coming back and helping homies with these 50s and 40s and all that. I want to say this. With the, with the atmosphere of what's going on and what happened to the youngster, I feel like people get checking in mixed up. It's a lot of ways to take that. It's a lot of ways to still be looking at it. When you come to these different neighborhoods, why you don't go to the G's or the people from the neighborhood and empower them to make money? That's the question you should be asking yourself. You got dudes that's trying to, that's trying to do shows, but you know what y'all do? Y'all bounce over and go to these white promoters. When you got dudes that want to do clubs, you bounce over and you go to these white dudes and these Jews, and these dudes that got these different clubs. I'm not telling you don't knock them, but what I am saying is this though. Give the dudes from the neighborhood in each area an opportunity to do a show with you. If you put your number out there and you say you want 50,000 for a show, go find one of the little homies or one of the homies from that area from that section and tell them bro i want fifty thousand. like i said in the original video i posted on that hey man ain't nobody finna come give no random nigga from the hood 50k random niggas from the hood can't be trusted and they ain't doing no business like that that's why you run to the ones who own the club and got the connections but see here's another indication that let me know he in bed with them boys because hey he using they same tactics divide and conquer if y'all know what that is y'all know what that is but on the cool, man, we already 23 minutes in and we going to keep going because it's uh, been so long. I'm going to give it all to y'all. You feel me? I usually would cut it short, but hey, we going to keep going. We're going to knock this all out. But see, we already know Lil Rise A done exposed everything. He exposed the fact that Gilly got set up by Big U because Big U called them and had them come out there and get that issue. Not to mention he exposed Meek Mill and Rick Ross are not liked by Big U, even though Big U try to portray that image. He exposed the fact that Quando Rondo, yeah, that little issue was a back door through Big U, allegedly. Let me say alleged because someone lost their life and we don't know this for sure. And then he exposed the fact that Nipsey Hussle, well, of course, Loose Cannon exposed the fact that Nipsey Hussle was foreshadowed to be knocked off before he ever even got his life taken, which set off alarms for Loose Cannon. And it should. It should. Cause that ain't something that should happen unless somebody's setting you up. And speaking of loose cannon, we all know he been going at big youth. He put this out too. Four, fifth, sixth, or whatever, I was with Rosé. Me and Rosé was together. Okay. 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 And Loose Cannon, he said, the lie detector test determined that was a lie, clown, and adds Rise, to which Rise comments on that again and says, dude is an idiot. He's going to be locked into those statements like Keefe D. This is why I can't let up, straight up. Dude just lied on record on this man's name saying he was with Rise, and he wasn't. Now Rise, he been gassing Big U for quite some time putting out all the stories from around their neighborhood and also talks about how big you was jealous of that man nipsey hustle and was trying to stop his motion because he seen he had real motion now why would he do this he did it because nipsey was his homie he loved nip 
and he's trying to clear up all the cap that been out there. I'm the one cleaning that up because I have a personal insight on that. I'm off the section. So I'm cleaning that up. And he been clearing up a lot, exposing a lot when it came to Big U. Like how Big U was laughing when somebody commented justice for Nip. These men started cracking up laughing as if it was something funny. You don't know what you ain't known, nigga. No, what you ain't known. You got to tell me what you ain't known. Justice for Nip. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, bruh, what's funny about that? If that was your young homie, you had so much love for him, how could you even laugh at some shit like that? Dude is just a flat out snake. But that wasn't it. That wasn't all Lil Rod Zay cleared up, like I told y'all in the beginning. He cleared up the situation with both the fats. And who is both the fats? Both the fats is Steven, Giles, Don Nelson. And we'll get into who both the fats is deeper in a later video. I'm going to make y'all perfectly understand who this man was, what type of man he was, and everything I know about both the fats. Now, both the facts, he was killed back in 2017, and there was a lot of rumors circulating around his death. Nobody really knew for sure exactly who it was outside of their hood, but one thing everybody did know was that it was by a fellow Rolling 60 gang member. Now, we get some new information regarding this situation, and it's really deeper than we thought because Lil Raz A coming out stating that allegedly big U and M camp knows something about this issue and both the fats alliance with big U at this time is kind of what initiated his demise you feel me because they already had ongoing conflict as we've seen in his earlier videos and y'all need to go check out his platform man because he giving out the gems as far as things that we wanted to know back then now he stated that they had a little scrap session already over the fight, well not fight, the rap pack that they tried to put on Nipsey Hussle, where Black Sam ended up busting in the air. Well, during the course of that, he said both the fats grabbed Big U and really started to go to work on it. So they already had prior issues. Well, I guess Big U tried to mend that when he had a bunch of trees and whatnot and try to get real close to both the fats. Well, let me let Lil Raz A explain it. He can explain it better than I can. Especially from Big U. So how do you break the ice? You come with a deal they can't refuse. This is around the time Big U was coming across all that weed. Allegedly sent the dude over there with an offer that both the fast couldn't refuse. It was nearly for free. The whole time, it was just to see the inner workings of what they had going on. To see their weaknesses, their strengths and their weaknesses. You know. Like scoping the bank. That was the beginning of the end for both the fast. Because now this dude was able to dictate his movement and get up in his face under the guise of business partners. So they did a couple of little plays. He copped a little bit from them for the low here and there until this one mysterious day. He get a call. I got some more flight, bro. Come outside. Man, they had security, so both the fast in there in flip flops and shorts. He comfy. He come outside, looking both ways, looking for this dude. I'm like, where he at? He said he right here on the corner of West Boulevard and 59th. Dude, still on the phone with him. Oh, you gotta walk to the corner. I'm right here on the corner. I parked over here. Dead homies. By the time he made it to that corner, he was ambushed, and that dude was the last one seen rolling off. Y'all go check that out on his platform. He said a lot in that. Rest in peace to that man. Both the facts. Now there's one part that I didn't put in here that he said about Brick Baby. And this is where Brick Baby come back in. Because Brick Baby was arguing with Cowboy while on live. 
and said something about fats and how he know Cowboy going to snitch about that situation so he can't bring that up. Now, why would Brick Baby say something like that? That's wild, right? Weird, right? Especially after the comments he made regarding Eric Holder in the Nipsey Hustle situation as if he was on the side of Eric Holder. All this stuff is crazy, but it's all coming to the light, right? Y'all let me know how y'all feel, though, man. Multiple lives taken. Multiple lives changed. Hey, it's just a lot of craziness going on. And y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Once again, man, all this stuff is crazy. And rest in peace to these men. We getting more and more information as the times go on. And Big U looking more and more like a snake. 